Hello everyone, Dr. Mad here. Let's get mad about Macbeth. So in this video, we're going to look at Act 2, Scene 4, which is the last scene of Act 2. So the summary is that nature has gone wild because of the killing. Malcolm and Donald Bain, the king's sons, have run away and Macbeth has been named king. So let's listen to the scene first before we go through it. Three score and ten I can remember well, within the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange. But this sore night hath trifled for my knowing. Ah, good father, thou seest the heavens, as troubled with man's act, threatens his bloody stage. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is night's predominance, or day's shame? The darkness does the face of earth entomb when living light should kiss it. Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. Uh, On Tuesday last, a falcon towering in her pride of place was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience, as they would make war with mankind. He said they ate each other. They did so to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon. Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborn. Malcolm and Donald Bain, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to school to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Columkill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardian of their bones. Will you to schoon? No, cousin. I'll to Fife. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, father. God's benison go with you. And with those that would make good of bad and friends of foes. Okay, so let's go back. Now you can read the summary again if you want to. It's a short summary. Let's go through the scene. Now, on the one hand, you don't need to worry too much about this scene in terms of going through it and learning it line by line or over analyzing it, okay? Um, but on the other hand, it's a critical scene because of this idea that nature has gone wild, okay? So, I mean, you could skip the scene and just learn these facts, this summary. Uh, and also from the plot point of view, we need to know that the sons have run away and that Macbeth has been named king. So you might wonder why I go through each scene of the play in this course. And the reason is the more practice you get from Sha about Shakespeare, the easier it becomes for you to learn and revise. And when you get your extract in the exam, it'll be easier for you to recognize and to analyze it when the time comes and where it fits in with the whole play. It's a good idea to have the whole, a picture of the whole play in your mind, okay? Even though you don't need to know every single scene and line and word at GCSE level, at least. Okay, so, Enter Ross and an old man. So he says that he's 70 years old. So score means 20. So 3 times 10, 3 times 20 is 60 plus 10 is 70. And he's saying he has seen some terrible, dreadful, strange things, but nothing like what he's seen tonight. And Ross says, yes. As you can see, the heavens have been troubled with man's act, in other words, the murder. 
and they are threatening the bloody stage, the earth. So obviously personification going on here. He's saying that if you look at the clock, it's meant to be daytime, but the dark night has strangled the traveling lamp. So this is the sun. Okay, so there's personification in this whole uh, few lines here. And then he says, uses a rhetorical question that is it because night is stronger than day or is it simply that the day is ashamed? In other words, at the murder, that darkness has covered the earth during day, even though it should be daylight. When living light should kiss it, it should be daylight, but darkness has covered it. And the old man says, yes, it's very unnatural, just like the deed that's been done, in other words, the murder. And he says, on Tuesday last, a falcon was killed by, a, by an owl. Now, on the one hand, both of these creatures are predators, and technically they could fight, and uh, we don't know who would win, but generally speaking, the point here is that the falcon is usually much higher than the owl. So it's very unusual for the owl to go fly up and kill the falcon, okay? So these are just examples of nature going wild. Here is into, to do with sunlight and night and day and so on. Here, some examples of animals going wild are being given. So this is the first example. And then it says, Duncan's horses, who are, which are beautiful and obedient, they broke out of their stalls where they live, were disobedient. So horses are usually very obedient once they've been broken in. I mean, if they're wild, they're not at all obedient. But these are broken in horses, totally obedient, and they have broken out, have become totally disobedient, and it's as though they are at war with mankind. And then the old man says, "'Tis said they ate each other." Now this line's a bit puzzling. I don't think we're meant to take it literally, but the point that Shakespeare is trying to make is that nature has gone wild. That is the effect he's trying to create. So horses, generally speaking, are vegetarians. They don't even eat other animals, let alone each other. And Ross says, yes, it's, it's true. I was absolutely amazed. And Macduff comes in and Ross asks him, how goes the world, sir, now? Now, obviously, this is a rhetorical question, really. But anyway, Macduff says, can't you see? In, in other words, implying that it's terrible. And Ross says, do we know who, who did the murder? And Macduff says, it's the guards who did it. And this line here really means, how did they justify it? Well, what did they say? And Macduff says, they were bribed. Now, we don't really know whether they actually admitted that or not. Why, why would they admit it? But we don't need to worry too much about it. So Macduff saying, oh, they were bribed to do it, or that, maybe that's the assumption that the questioners have made. I guess you could say, why would the guards admit it? And then Macduff says that the sons have stolen away, which makes it look like they did it. And Ross says, against nature still. So referring back to how nature has gone wild, he's saying, well, this also is just as wild that to kill your own father is just to become king, for example. So this ambition here, um, that that's that's also obviously the most unnatural thing you can do. And then he says, looks like Macbeth will become king. And Macduff says he's already been named king and gone to school to be crowned. Okay. And Ross says, where's Duncan's body? I mean, much of, a lot of this is not really relevant. But like I say, it's good practice to go through and try and learn Shakespeare's language. And Macduff says his body has been taken to this place here where his ancestors are buried. And Ross says, will you go to school to see the coronation? Macduff says, no, I'll, I'm going to Fife, which is where he's from. And Ross says, no, I'm going to go to the coronation. And Macduff says, well, I hope things go well there for you. And this line here, you don't need to worry too much about this line. It's just imp implying that he's worried about how things may change now that Macbeth is the king. And they say goodbye to the old man. And the old man says, my blessings, God's blessings go with you. 
And then this line here, you don't need to worry too much about. It's just a reference to appearance and reality, this constant theme of the play. Okay, how good and bad and friends and foes are being changed, exchanged over. Okay, so that's the scene. So like I said, don't worry too much about it, except that it's definitely a scene you could refer to in your essay, depending on the question of this idea of nature going wild because King Dan the king, God's representative on earth has been killed. And here's some simple questions for you just to make sure you've been listening and learning. Uh, this one is perhaps the main point, okay? So stop the video, answer these questions. And when you're ready, you can look at the answers on the next slide, which I'm gonna go to now. So there's the answers. And as always, if you like the video, please do subscribe and tell all your friends if you found it useful and learn from it. So this is actually the last scene of Act 2. Um, so we'll be moving on to Act 3 in the next video.